So, in this lecture, we will see a very intuitive proof of this Cauchy Riemann equation. So, let's first see what does this uh, theorem states. So, consider a complex function, which is a function of a complex variable z, and z is nothing but x plus i y. So, this function has a real part and an imaginary part. So, u is a, obviously a function of x and y and v is a function of x and y. And for example, let's say f of z is equal to z square. So, which means that x plus i y square because z is equal to x plus i y. So, now we get x square minus y square plus i times twice x y. You just have to use the formula a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus twice a b plus b square. So, you can see that this is the u of x y and this is the imaginary part which is p of x y. So, now if the derivative of this function exists, so let's say this is a prime of z, right? So, then these two equation will hold the first one is delta u by delta x is equal to delta v by delta y and the second one is delta u by delta y is equal to negative delta v by delta x so now we will prove these two equation in a graphical way. Let's start. So, in the beginning, we have to understand what does this term mean? What does it mean by uh, feeling that f prime of z exists, the derivative of f of z exists? It means that the limit delta z tends to 0 of this thing f of z plus delta z minus f of z over delta z this limit exists if this limit exists then we can say that the derivative of this function exists and which is nothing but the limiting value of this thing so in the complex plane this is the x-axis and the y-axis. So, in the complex plane, delta z can be in any direction. It can be in this direction or this in this direction or can any direction. For any direction of delta z, this limit, the value of this thing will be the same and which is nothing but a prime of z. If this is the case, we say that this function is differentiable at that point. Now, we can write this as delta f, right? The change of the function due to the change of the independent variable z. So, if delta f by delta z, this limit exists for delta z tends to 0, we say that the function is differentiable and now assume that the function is differentiable. Now, we have to prove the Cauchy Riemann equations. So, delta f by delta z is equal to a prime. So, now take delta z in the in this direction in the direction of the real axis so this is delta z1 right <coughs> and you can see that delta z1 is nothing but just delta x the imaginary part of delta z1 is 0 as delta z1 in, is in the is parallel to the real axis now 
from this equation we get delta f is equal to f prime times delta z so for delta z1 we get delta f1 so if you multiply delta z1 by a complex number which is f prime it will rotate this delta z1 by certain angle which is nothing but the argument of this complex number and also the magnitude of this delta z1 will increase by certain factor which is the magnitude of f prime so delta f1 will be let's say in this direction and the angle between these two is theta and theta is nothing but the argument of f prime now let's take delta z in the imaginary axis so this is delta z2 if you take delta z in the real axis or in the imaginary axis the value of f prime or the value of delta f by delta z is the same as i said earlier as this is the condition for the existence of the derivative of the function f right so for delta z2 you get a similar equation like delta f2 is equal to f prime times delta z2 if you want to find out the change of the function f due to the change delta z2 you just have to multiply delta z2 by the same number f prime as this f prime you know so when you multiply delta z2 by f prime you rotate this delta z2 by the same angle theta right and also the magnitude will be increased by the same factor so this is delta f2 and the angle between these two is the same theta and also the ratio between these two line segment and these two line segment are equal because you know when you multiply delta z1 by a prime or multiply delta z2 by f prime the magnitude is increased by the same factor now draw a perpendicular from this point on delta z1 if you draw the perpendicular it's like this and also add them also draw a perpendicular on delta z2 now add them like this now let's consider these two triangles as you can see this angle and this angle are equal and also the ratio between these two sides of this triangle and these two sides of this triangle are equal so this triangle and this triangle are similar triangles also this is 90 degree here and this is 90 degree here so this triangle and this triangle are also similar and the same goes for these two triangles so you can see that this uh, set of triangles and this set of triangles are similar. Now, what is the magnitude of this line segment? So this is nothing but <coughs> the imaginary part of delta F1. So if you write delta F1 as delta U1 plus I delta V1, so this will be nothing but delta v1 right the imaginary part of delta f1 and what about this 
this is nothing but the real part of delta F1. So this is nothing but delta E1. Now let's talk about this line segment. So this is the real part of delta F2 and you can see that this is in the negative x direction, right? So the magnitude of this line segment will be what? Will be negative delta u2. I just write down that delta f2 is delta u2 plus i delta v2 and you can see that as delta u2 is in the negative x direction this delta u2 is a negative number so if you want to find out the magnitude of this line segment we will have to add a negative sign here and what about this this is nothing but the imaginary part of delta f2 so this is delta v2 as i said earlier that these two systems are similar the ratio between this line segment and this line segment will be the same as the ratio between this and this right they are the corresponding line segments of in this system so what is delta z2 delta z2 is nothing but you know you can see that delta z2 is in the imaginary axis so the real part of delta z2 is 0 so delta z2 will be i times delta y2 so, so the value of this line segment is delta y2 right so the, the ratio between this line segment and this line segment is delta v1 over delta delta x1 right Z1, delta Z1 is in the real axis. So the magnitude of this line segment is nothing but delta X1. Which is equal to the ratio between this line segment and this line segment. So which is negative delta U2 over the magnitude of this line segment which is nothing but delta Y2. In the same way. I can write if I take the ratio between this line segment and this line segment I get delta u1 over this is delta x1 and the corresponding line segments are this which is delta v2 and this which is delta y2 so delta v2 over delta y2 now if you take the limit delta z tends to 0 from this equation you get partial derivative of v with respect to x is equal to negative partial derivative of u with respect to y and from this equation you get partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to partial derivative of v with respect to y so these are the Cauchy remain equation now let's see an example so previously we considered a function f of z equal to z square and we have shown that the real part of this function is x square minus y square and the imaginary part is twice x y so this is u of x y and this is p of x y now consider this equation if you take the partial derivative of p with respect to x you get twice y and if you take the partial derivative of u with respect to y you get negative twice y right so you see that this equation is correct also you can check the second one delta u by delta x if you take the partial derivative you get twice x and also if you take the partial 
derivative of twice xy with respect to y, you get twice x. So this equation is also correct. So thank you for watching this lecture. And I would like to give a special thanks to my friend Ahmed Annaba as he shared this idea with me. So thank you all for watching this video.